In February 2023, the CDC published a study on the mental health of teenagers in the United States. Considering how unexpectedly the COVID-19 pandemic upended young people's lives, there can be little doubt that many of the study's participants are likely struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder. Tragically, we lack a comprehensive understanding of what trauma really is, which limits our capacity to offer meaningful support to those who live in its shadow. In my research, I focus on the development of the concept of psychological trauma in the history of established Western medicine. Through the lens of gender studies, I analyze influential French medical journal publications from World War I, which was a critical moment in the development of medicalized trauma with a far-reaching legacy. I read for recurring linguistic, thematic, and visual elements that can help to flesh out the culturally constructed gendered social narratives that informed widely used models. In particular, the repetition of one key term becomes visible, la volonté. Roughly translated as willpower, the construct of la volonté grew out of a long history in the West of conceptualizing masculinity as control over others, control over oneself, particularly over one's emotions. An extension of this doctrine, World War I French doctors assumed that if men struggled emotionally, they either didn't really want to recover or they lacked the masculine willpower to make it so. The theory of trauma built around la volonté therefore villainized emotions as a feminizing threat to men's self-control. One 1916 study by Jean Camus and Napper translated the ideal of masculine self-regulation into the visual realm. Camus and Nepper charted traumatized soldiers' emotion-induced physical reactions before, during, and after exposure to unexpected stimuli. Although these stimuli included firing a revolver, they insisted that the procedure minimally altered the breathing or heart rate of patients with reasonable emotional responses, that is, masculine self-control. By contrast, they described the responses of traumatized patients as manifesting, quote, profound, often even violent, disturbances, including hyperventilation, trembling, and tearfulness. The visual representations of this data communicate a broader view of an unrealistic degree of masculine self-control as the benchmark of psychological and physical health. This image allegedly portrayed the steady vascular motor responses of an excellent pilot with a firm grip on his emotions. The small white cross near the center signified the moment at which the gunshot was introduced, and as we can see, there is no change to the soldier's heart rate or breathing. These figures on the right, however, represented what Camus and Nepper described as excessively emotional soldiers, as demonstrated by their inability to control their emotional, quote, violent trembling and, quote, disordered breathing. These considerations reflect a much broader trend in French doctors' conceptualization of psychological trauma. They viewed emotion experienced in even the most terrifying circumstances as excessive, something to be controlled and moved past as quickly as possible. It's not difficult to imagine how this approach could prevent doctors from developing a more scientific model of trauma. Yet the historical frames of reference that this work provides make visible comparable narratives in today's psychiatric understanding. Currently, the leading international authority, the American Psychological Association, defines trauma as, quote, any disturbing experience that results in significant fear, helplessness, dissociation, confusion, or other disruptive feelings intense enough to have a long-lasting negative effect on a person's attitudes, behavior, and other aspects of functioning. In conversation with the analysis I presented here, key terms like disruptive feelings and functioning come to the fore. To conceptualize the feelings themselves as disruptive in this way theorizes human emotion as the problem, rather than traumatic human-driven events like an unmitigated pandemic, sexual assault, or war. As this example illustrates, Gendered social narratives distort our ability as scientists to formulate constructive research questions and arrive at productive conclusions. However, the study of the origins of medicalized trauma can provide historical perspectives that make these unscientific value systems visible to us, allowing us to construct new models that effectively, humanely help the most vulnerable among us. Thank you.